So, uh, welcome everyone. This is a stream that's going up on YouTube, but I'm streaming this on Twitch right now, on my Twitch channel. So this is gonna be real time, and uh, I'll be editing this later. I'll say this right now. The first thing I wanna stress is that uh, if this is your first time trying to do pixel art, I personally do not recommend uh, starting with SRB2 because it's particularly pretty big. Like, uh, you know, if, if when compared to other uh, game sprite styles, it's a lot bigger. It has uh, a lot more colors. So, uh, I will say this. If you want to make a Cyber 2 sprites, but you're new to pixel art as a whole, then I recommend you start with something smaller and simpler. Just to get the hang of, uh, you know, using the tools and drawing pixels in general. One thing I might also explain is uh, what makes the SRB2 style. Like, uh, I, if I had to say what makes the SRB2 style, is that, uh, you know, it's more cell shady, you know, with a quite defined outline to make uh, the, you know, the characters more cartoony. And uh, there's another trait that I would like to uh, emphasize in the style is that uh, it's uh, most of the time particularly shiny. Very often, you know, uh, characters are pretty shiny. You'll see that uh, they have a pretty strong contrast lighting on their heads. There's a reason for this, and I think it's important to, uh, you know, remind everyone. So the old SRB2 styles were particularly very inspired on the Sonic Extreme sprites from back in the day. The, the reference is pretty clear. The whole intent here was to make something that's a 90s pre-render look, pretty much. Hence why uh, there's uh, such emphasis and strong highlights on the characters. With that in mind, I'm just gonna make a few quick examples here, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Buffer, we're gonna make a sphere right here. We have our sphere right here. And uh, we're gonna give it some lighting. Now, we're gonna add a uh, specular light. Now, in SRB2 sprites, when you add specular lights, they're particularly close to the, the bottom of the lighting. Or something this big. And also, add some shading right here. So, we, we made our sphere. It doesn't look SRB2 style yet. The color of the outline usually changes when closer to lighter or darker areas. Like, it looks fine on the bottom, but it looks out of place on the top. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make the outline lighter for the top of the sphere, like this. Now we're getting a little bit somewhere, but it doesn't quite look SRB2 style yet. So another particular trait that uh, is very highly used in pixel art and as a Cyber 2 as a whole, it's called Anti-Alias. So Anti-Alias is pretty much like a, a transition color between uh, the edges of two clusters. You wanna Anti-Alias that, place a transition color like this. And Anti-Alias is a quite tricky method to get used to because it's very easy to mess it up. For example, sometimes I see people add too much of it, like they do something like this, uh, sometimes they add quite a lot of it, and they don't need to. Now, one mistake I see a lot is when people, uh, you know, they add so much anti-alias that it creates this staircase effect, but it just hugs the outline of the cluster, the color around it. This is known as banding. You want to avoid this because it doesn't create the smoothness that anti-alias tries to give. When you just zoom out, Sort of just becomes a weird blur between colors, and you don't want that. You absolutely don't want that. Now, if you happen to spot this in your sprite, this is actually very easy to clean up. It's very easy to fix this. You just uh, break the, the lines a little bit. You break that out weird outline effect. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna add some anti-alias to the top as well, to the lighting. And again, you don't always need anti-alias. I see, uh, I've seen some cases where people add a lot of colors to their sprite to make it look smoother, and I'm gonna explain why in a bit. Now, we're gonna add some anti-alias around the outlines as well. And if you wanna break the outlines a little bit with anti-alias, you're free to do so. But I highly recommend you not overdo it. I think I'm gonna make the outline on the top here a little bit lighter as well. 
so it's something that you have to do by eye a lot and check out the which colors work better as anti-alias for example on these edges i think slightly darker color would be good i'm gonna break the lines here a little bit if you have a big highlight you can also give it anti-alias as well now there is one mistake i see people make sometimes which they try to replicate this shady method but with uh smaller sprites they'll have a a body part or a character of this size and then they do just as much shading as they would on a bigger character so when that's made a smaller sphere with just the same shading method that we just learned so what's the problem here well, uh, when you make something too small and you add too much shading on just that one little part, it sort of creates uh, too much detail to just uh, a small body part of the character. And this is true even for smaller spheres as well. You're gonna see a pattern here real quick. So, are you guys starting to see the problem now? The smaller something is, the less detail it will need. Like when you add this much color and this much uh, lighting and shading to something smaller, the more over detail it becomes. Try to avoid this on general cases. So what I recommend you do instead is this. For something smaller like this, you're fine to just give it lighting. Like just, just lighting on top and look just fine without extra shading. You can even like to, you know, make the lighting more emphasized depending on how close it is to the light source and one thing I forgot to emphasize is that the light source in a cyber 2 generally comes from above like when you're shading a cyber 2 characters you gotta keep in mind that uh, you know light source is coming directly from above the character so it's not coming from diagonal or from the side or anything like that it's coming directly from the top with that in mind it's just a uh, some anti-alias, lining the outline a little bit, and add some anti-alias. Also, this works the other way around as well. If you want to do this for just the base color and the shading, you also can do that just fine. You can also do this just fine if you want. Like I said, it depends how close something is to the light source. Like, uh, let's say that uh, this ball represents uh, the head of the character. And this ball represents the body, so the head is close to the light source, and the body is more obstructed and more far away from the light. Now let's do the, the smaller sphere. The smaller sphere is going to have even, even less detail. Sometimes if they're too small, you don't even need to uh, add lighting, you can just add a highlight and call it a day. And this is uh, you know, also true for an even smaller sphere. So that's my recommendation. The whole rule of the thumb here is, the smaller something is, the less detail you add. Now I'll go over some other common mistakes that people make. Now one common mistake that I see a lot is that people like to, sometimes they think uh, more detail means it looks better. And not quite, for a couple of reasons. And one of them, I'll show you right now. Let's see what happens when we give this sphere more colors. Now, will the sprite look smoother as a result? Technically, yes, it will. But will it look better? It's uh, quite a tricky topic that I'm going to get into. So yeah, it's a very detailed sphere now. But uh, why is this a problem? For one, for one, when compared to how the sphere looked before, it no longer looks as sharp. It looks quite blurry. And also, this makes uh, animating the character much harder. Because you have uh, twice as many colors to manage. So every time you start a character, especially if you're going to make something for a mod or an animation, the sprites, I cannot stress this enough. Please avoid adding too many colors. 
okay? If you think a sprite can live without a color, if you think uh, it doesn't add much to how it overall looks, then uh, by all means, try to optimize the color amount and go for something that's more animation friendly, like this. Now, I'll go over other common mistakes that people make in the sprite style. I do not promise that this, is apply, this applies to every single sprite style. This is just for SR2 in particular, but SR2 usually has up to three volume levels, pretty much. The lighting, we have the, the base color, sometimes known as the mid-tone, and we have the shading. Now, there may be exceptions where you can add a little bit more detail than just this, but for general characters, this is how it works. So why am I bringing this up? Well, sometimes we have people that do this. Basically, they start adding more and more shading levels and more layers of shades that start to, uh, you know, move it away from the cell shaded sprite style that the game is supposed to have. Now, this isn't particularly bad in itself, but if you're going for something more cell shady, then uh, I do not recommend you uh, do this, not at all. So, for SR2 in particular, I recommend you avoid this sort of uh, uh, soft shading look. So, uh, contrast is a pretty important part. You know, contrast pretty much defines how much uh, variety there is between tones, for example. Uh, these cars are pretty high contrast because they highly differ from one another. Now, let's see how it looks if we make the, the contrast stronger, for example. So, this is how it looks with a stronger contrast. And this is how it looks with a weaker contrast. So, contrast is, is a tricky thing to explain. Because, uh, you know, there's not just one case for it. Like, uh, you're gonna have different cases where you want something more strong on the shades or something more soft look. Like, uh, if you're making something shinier that's meant to be more metallic, you might want to push the contrast to be a little bit stronger. If you're making something softer that's not meant to look, uh, you know, uh, too shiny, you gotta want, want to go for something weaker. And, uh, you know, in both of these cases, you might want to mess with the the anti-alias a little bit, because, uh, let me really zoom out over here. Like, when you really zoom out, it becomes hard to tell apart the, the shades on the anti-alias, which means that, uh, you can easily just do this. You can get rid of some colors, these situations just fine. Like, see, this looks fine without the anti-alias. And it goes the other way around as well, like, if you think, uh, colors could be smoother on stronger contrast, you're free to just uh, add a little bit more color. I hope I'm making sense over here. Again, it's an elaborate topic, and I'm not going to be able to go over all the cases. I'm just giving a general idea of how it works. One common mistake I see with anti-alias and cell out effect on outlines is this. It starts off uh, alright, but then they start doing this. And what's the problem with this? Well, it becomes too noisy looking. I recommend that uh, you avoid doing this. Uh, what you can do instead is this. As you know, with pixel art, you want the results to look cleaner and easier to work with, and also easier to look at. We do our anti-alias. You break the alliance a little bit, but you keep it clean. You guys got the idea, right? So yeah, try to keep it simple. You can also do... And it'll also work. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, another common mistake that I see sometimes that with artists that are just beginning, sometimes they do the anti-alias backwards. I don't know how this happens, but uh, avoid doing this, please. Now that we uh, established some of the core principles and the few do's and don'ts, I'll just repeat myself. Uh, keep it animation friendly, do not add too many details, and uh, you know, the smaller a sprite is, this, the lesser amount of details you're gonna add. With all that being said, we're gonna work on now are a few example sprites so we can apply what we learn. So one character I'm gonna make today is gonna be Mother Amy. One thing I need to emphasize here for everyone watching and learning. Use reference. Always use reference, please. Professionals use reference all the time. So you'll be a dummy to not use it yourself. One thing I forgot to bring up is that your drawing knowledge still transfers to pixel art as well. Your anatomy knowledge, your knowledge on drawing poses. In my case, 
I use a drawing tablet when sketching my pixel art. But uh, when I do the, the outlining and the color and the shading, I use my mouse. So different artists do this their own way. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do mine. You know, some uh, guidelines for the perspective of the head. I'm gonna do a front diagonal, semi-profile view. So it's just gonna be looking a little bit to the side. It's fine to get messy, by the way. You don't have to get the sketch all clean looking. So one thing about making the character stand in SRB2. So uh, you may have noticed that uh, SRB2 legs are not always, uh, you know, uh, standing straight. Like, they're not on a flat line. And why is that? The reason for that is that because SRB2 is a 3D game using sprites, the general view for looking at the character is going to be a slightly top-down view where we're going to see their legs uh, standing on the 3D plane. They're always, uh, you know, angle a little bit. And this is why. So keep that in mind. By the way, this is uh, just a personal preference. Say you're making a character and you draw them standing. They're just on a lax pose like this. You know, nothing too crazy. They're just standing still. Now, this is fine. All right, there's nothing wrong with this. But uh, here's a little recommendation. If you're working with an expressive character, try to convey emotion through their pose. For example, Amy is a more jolly character, for example. So it's fine for her to have her arms more curved up like this. You know, something that fits her personality. Now, how much you want to push that is up to you. I cannot tell you how much you should, uh, you know, how much emotion is enough on the character pose. I'll leave that up to you. It's just a little personal advice that I have. Now I'm going to make a new layer and we're going to start drawing her. Nice, nice. I hope everything is clear enough so far and easy to understand. So I'm going to anti-alias the eye a little bit, not too much. Now I forgot to add lighting to the head. Should do that. So uh, because Amos's head is a had more detail and not as big as the other characters, it doesn't quite fit the uh, lighting on the head like say Sonic does or Classic Amy does. You know, it's fine to just just uh, you know uh, ditch the the big lighting and just have a specular light on her head. I would say I think that's completely valid. See, I think this looks just fine as well. I don't know why I'm shading the head already. I have to do the rest of the body. That's on me. All right. So one other thing I like to uh, bring up about SRB2 is that uh, whenever you want to make uh, you know the eye pupils, SRB2 is a classic game. Sometimes you're making a modern character. When you're doing a, a classic character, the pupils are gonna look a little bit more like this, right? Just uh, you know, solid black and shiny, right? Now, if you're making a modern character, you you may or may not want to, you know, give them a color pupil like this. Amy over here will look a little bit more like this. It's a very tricky thing to get right on such a small resolution. But I figured that uh, I like it the most when it looks like this. So, one little reminder. Keep in mind that uh, the further something is on the light source, or if it's something's hidden away from the light source, like say the legs, do not use uh, bright colors for it. Obviously, go for darker colors here. Alright, we're almost done with Amy. Now, times like this, you know what helps? A preview window. Let's see. Somewhere around here. There we go. Well, it's good to see how the sprite looks from afar without having to constantly zoom out yourself. And because, you know, when you're working on something up close, your perception of that art is going to be different than when you zoom away. So, uh, for example, I just zoomed out. I just pull out the preview right now, and uh, you know everything. I, I start seeing a lot of problems. I think I can consider this finished. So let's move on to the next. Now, say you want to make something a little bit more drastic, you know, something uh, not quite Sonic styles, so to speak. Like say you want to make uh, something more humanoid, more anime, 
right? You all saw me talking about the method where make a new layer and start sketching the sprite, right? Like this. Doesn't uh, feel right to you, like uh, getting the face details feels weird for you. Well, what you can do is expand your canvas a little bit, then you're gonna have a lot more space uh, to uh, sketching your details. I think that will do. So after we have this uh, lovely sketch, we uh, shrink it back. And boy, it got demolished. Look how it looks in the linear. Okay, that looks usable. I just remember something that I forgot to uh, mention for anyone watching this video. One problem with making SRB2 sprites, everything you make for SRB2 is limited to a certain palette that the game uses. You cannot use any colors outside of set, set palette. So, uh, one problem with working with a limited palette is that, as of the present, the current palette doesn't have too many good yellows to work with. So, if you want a, something kind of orangey, but also kind of yellow, you're gonna have to struggle a little bit. This is gonna vary from person to person. Not every artist is gonna want to do everything the exact same way. This is how I do it. If you want to do it in your own way, you're free to uh, disagree. But how I, I recommend doing hair in Asabi 2 is uh, keep it flat, keep it simple, add some uh, highlights, like uh, some flat highlights. That's the idea here, is to treat it like a sort of like an anime hair. Where it's just a single line. But you know, the place, the place of the highlights can vary. It's gonna depend on the design. So, uh, see what looks best, pretty much. For Link, I'm not sure if it should be lower. That works. And a long. Now that we're working on the clothing a little bit, let the lining do the work. Don't stress the details too much. Like, I don't need to uh, worry about making a bunch of folds. Which of details, again, my advice is to keep it animation friendly because if you're making this for a mod, you're making this for like a 200 sprites minimum from a bunch of different angles. So you want to keep this easy to draw, right? So usually when I do folds, I imply them a little bit like uh, the lighting like this. And the same thing applies to the shading, really. I forgot the seals on the shirt. Yeah, I think this will do. So yeah, that's another thing that I like to stress a little bit. When possible, if your art program allows it, make sure to work on separate layers. Now for body parts, for weapons, for items that the character is holding, whatever. Let's make a sword, right? There's our sword. Uh, let's see, let's make it thinner towards the tip. And now the fun part, the shield. I'm gonna symmetrically draw the shield first. Draw the wings. I forgot there are some triangles on the sides, yeah. Huh, that wasn't so bad. Now, uh, this looks a little bit too linear right now, I think. So I'm gonna shift the side one half of it a little bit. So that way it looks like a... Like it's sort of turning away, you know? Like uh, the angle is kind of you know, facing away. I'm gonna shade this. I don't know how yet. Uh, wish me luck. Yeah, so here's what I'm gonna do. Out of this, half, like this. The other half. Ah! Not bad. Yeah, uh, so... Let me add here the edge. The side of the shoe. Let's suppose that we're making this for a mod, right? I think the shield would just be a separate sprite from uh, the player. Like, just keep it a, you know, a separate layer from Link himself. That we don't need to constantly animate him holding the shield. Because that would be a nightmare. Uh, the gold parts of the shield not follow the same lighting. 
as the, the main face of the shield, according to the official art. So we can take some liberties here in making it shinier. I'm gonna give a little bit of ambient lighting to this side of the, the gold parts. And yeah, look at that, that looks nice. Oh man. Fun fact, it's the first time I draw my shield. A little specular light here, a little specular light here. And we'll need a shading color, let's see. Hmm. I'll make the sword uh, more uh, tinted. I'll try other colors. What about cyan? Okay, nah, this one looks too icy, so it's not a good look. I forgot the belt buckle. Oh, I feel silly now. Yeah, this will do. Well, there's your link. Unfortunately, yeah, he doesn't he didn't come out uh, with the, the best hair color. Like I said, uh, panel limitations do get in the way sometimes. And in Link's case, it sure was the case for his hair. So I didn't want to make a metallic character. Just so uh, people had an example of uh, how to do metal. <laughs> He's so small. Very angry. Little angry man. <laughs> oh my god, th this part is making me laugh. So we're gonna add some shading here. Real basic shading before we get into the real meat of what makes metallic shading work. Well, so we have our archer sprite, which we shaded at the moment, but uh, we can all tell that something is off, right? Now, obviously we could add some highlights, obviously, add some uh, some light here, add some light here as well, and some here as well. So we added some lights. It doesn't quite feel like enough, does it? We could use more shine than this. It could look shinier, right? How do? Well, uh, one thing that uh, is very good when making metal shading do some uh, reflective lighting. You're gonna have a lot of lighting bouncing on the metal, like uh, it's gonna reflect around the metallic object a lot. The lighting is gonna appear more than just on the top, that's for sure. And, uh, he's starting to look more metallic now. Before he was looking kind of plastic. I'm gonna try to not overdo it. Don't wanna add it to too many areas, just the ones that uh, have the most space for it. I have a lighter outline color as well. Let's see. There we go. Definitely a lot smoother. Definitely looking better already. Now I'm gonna be very honest. Like, do not take just me as your main reference for how to shade metal. This is not something I do super often enough. Make sure you have uh, multiple examples, multiple references, possibly if you can find tutorials on a uh, how metallic shading works. I think that will be real handy to have in hand as well. I'm just demonstrating how I apply it. So keep that in mind, please. Still missing some spots. Don't take too long. Like, I'm not the right person to ask when it comes to how does metal materials work. But uh, I can tell you that uh, you wanted to make it look real reflective. As silly as uh, that wording sounds. If you want to make it look uh, real reflective, I want to go for something really metallic, real shiny. Given the illusion that it's reflecting its surroundings, you can uh, have an extra tone. And create this uh, dark line that's being reflected. Now, there's a uh, different degrees to it. Like uh, this is uh, something a little bit more extreme. But uh, you can also just do something a little bit more basic like this, like the zero sprite that I made. It just ha has a slight, slight more emphasis on the highlights and the spectral lights. You know, uh, this Shovel Knight sprite, you know, he's a bit more reflective than the zero sprite that I showed. And uh, there's also this uh, Rocket Knight sprite that I made, which is uh, sort of a middle ground between the zero and the Arthur that I made. Like, uh, you know, there's some lighting underneath, but not too much. So, you add how, many, how much lighting you uh, you think is appropriate for the design. Take Metal Sonic, it's also a good example here. Uh, he also has this whole, uh, you know, lighting reflecting all over the metal. And, uh, you know, there's uh, even a little bit of a dark string here to uh, give that impression. There's also another little detail here, where, if applicable, you can make the some metallic parts reflect another color, just to further add to that reflectiveness. What if I can do that to uh, the Arthur Sprite, actually? 
Let me try. You want a more silver look to the armor? We'll throw in some light blues as well. Yep, that, that can work. Yeah, this is tricky, not gonna lie. I got a fairly decent result. So yeah, uh, sorry if this was a little bit confusing to grasp. Metal shading is uh, something hard to explain, but I do my best here to demonstrate. And uh, for everyone watching on YouTube, I stream every uh, weekend pretty much. Usually I do sprite and art streams every Saturday and I do game streams every Sunday. Hope this was a good watch. I hope you all learned something from this. And uh, one thing I want to stress once again is that uh, do not take uh, this as like uh, the word of God, okay? I cannot uh, tell you how to do your sprites and uh, this is all my, my personal advice. So, so yeah, I hope uh, the SR2 sprite style was uh, straightforward enough. It isn't meant to be restrictive at all. Once again, the main traits are the cell shading and the outlines, but uh, you know, that can vary depending on how you want to adapt a character. If you want something flatter, like uh, say a uh, bug over here, you could do that. If you want something uh, even flatter, even cartoonier, like this, you can also do that if you want. If you want to straight up a caricature of a real life actor, go for it. You know, if you want to make literally Parappa and, uh, you know, no shading at all, you can do that. You know, if you want to make a CDI sprite, you can also do that. There are no real hard set rules here, so do what you prefer, really. So, happy spriting. Happy spriting to all of you.